Welcome to Lunchbox Sessions, bite-sized industrial training. Hello, this is Carl from lunchboxsessions.com and welcome to the part two video on closed loop hydrostatic drives. In the part one video, we looked at the concepts of infinitely adjustable flow rates being sent from the pump to the motor and being able to speed up that motor depending on where the operator moves the control lever to get the right angle on the swash plate in the pump. And we looked at the concept of being able to return that swash plate all the way back to the neutral position to stop the rotation of the motor and pull that control lever over center to get a completely reversed flow around the loop to reverse the direction of the motor. This is a very popular hydraulic circuit for skid steer loaders. It's common with some dozers and you also find it on very heavy duty conveyance systems in the mill for a mine or in a pulp mill or a lumber mill. So closed loop hydrostatic drives are fairly common for variable speed reversing hydraulic motors. In this video, we want to look at the concept of pressure control and see what happens when the system pressure gets too high. And of course, an event where the system pressure gets too high would, in almost every single case, start at the motor. An overpressure condition would be one where the motor shaft is being asked to provide more torque than the machine should be able to provide, and hence the pressure comes up to a maximum value. So right now, the pressure that we see on the top side of the loop is as a result of how hard the motor is having to work to turn the machinery that the motor is connected to. So in our live schematics, we like to provide what we call a load slider. It's just a sliding tool on the control panel. And as I slide it to the right, you'll notice that the pressure in the hydraulic system continues to increase and the color becomes more red. It started out in the yellow range and moved through orange and it's up to red. And of course, when I move the load slider all the way to the right, watch what happens. All of a sudden, the counter torque at that motor, the amount of work that we're asking that motor to do is too great. And we sense that as an overpressure condition. What happened? Our hydraulic motor has stalled and we find out that our flow is moving from the top side of the circuit right through a cross port relief valve and back to the inlet side of the pump. And so flow is continuing to occur, but flow is not passing through the motor. We have reached a point where the easier path for the fluid is through the relief valve. Now in a typical open loop hydraulic system, the relief valve typically leads back to tank. But if we were to do that with a closed loop pump, we would be depriving the inlet side of our pump, which is still in displacement mode, causing an enormous amount of cavitation damage. So in the case of a closed loop pump, the cross port relief valve opens and sends fluid across to the opposite side of the loop. It's almost like a, a fluidic short circuit, if you will, to borrow a metaphor from electrical systems. And so our motor remains in a stalled condition because the load against the motor shaft is too great and we have detected that as a pressure that is too high or at least should not be allowed to go any higher. Now, if you're saying to yourself, hey, I can imagine that there's a lot of heat building up here as oil just goes over the cross port relief and aren't we headed for a thermal meltdown? Yes, the potential for that certainly is there. But in an inexpensive hydrostatic pump, a cross port relief valve is all you will get and it's assumed that the operator of the machine will soon remedy the situation that is causing our motor to be overloaded. So let's remedy the situation. I'll back down the load resistance slider and we'll see that our motor is turning once again. So is there another way to handle this scenario? Well, absolutely there is. Just like expensive or more professional grade, industrial grade open loop pumps that have a pressure compensator on them, so too is that feature available on closed loop hydrostatic pumps. 
So I'm going to click a button here that says add pressure compensator. Watch what happens to our cross port relief valves. They're going to move from their current position. This top relief valve is going to move down and our bottom cross port relief is going to move upward and we're going to see the addition of two more pressure valves. Perhaps you think these outside two valves didn't move, but they did. Notice that it says cross port relief here and cross port relief is now here. Oh, and an interesting note saying that these cross port reliefs are now only for extreme pressure spikes, for shocks. Instead, we have added another type of pressure valve which looks an awful lot like a relief valve, except that fluid is not going back to the other side of the loop or not going back to tank. It's going onward to another function. And when you go through a pressure valve and onward to another actuator of some kind, in those circumstances, we refer to this valve more accurately as a sequence valve. There's one on this side of the loop at the bottom and another at the top of the diagram. So since we're still in forward drive, watch the sequence valve on the top of the schematic as I overload the hydraulic motor once again. All right, something's very different from the last time. You don't see a continuous flow of fluid. You don't see those flow arrows continuously coming across from the overloaded side of the loop to the other. No, something very different has happened here. The sequence valve has popped open as the system is overloaded sending a very small amount of fluid into the control piston. And the control piston built into the pump moves the swash plate to the neutral position and the pump is essentially off stroke, meaning no longer displacing fluid. So that's very different from when we're using cross port reliefs. At least now we don't have a constant stream of oil moving over a spring loaded relief valve, which would just cause overheating. We've simply told the pump to hold the pressure that we need. Don't reduce the pressure. Just don't allow the pressure to go any higher than the setting of the sequence valves that trigger the pressure compensate function using the very same control piston that is used to servo the pump's swash plate for the correct displacement and direction. Ah, right. You're seeing down here at the bottom left corner of the diagram an infinitely adjustable proportional valve. It shows a lever, but on a lot of systems these days, the valve is operated electrically or perhaps by a hydraulic pilot signal. In either case, this valve's purpose is to instruct the pump on the desired amount and direction of flow. But when the motor is overloaded here, let's go back to a normal state. So right now this valve is being used to instruct the control piston on which direction and how much flow. But when overloaded, when the hydraulic motor way down there on the right hand side is overloaded, as you're about to see the sequence valve pop, but maybe this time keep your eye on that control piston over by the pump on the left hand side and see what happens. There we go. It returns the swash plate to the neutral position. The pump does come back on stroke very slightly as pressures in the system drop due to internal leakages inside the pump or inside the motor, anywhere else that they may occur. Pump comes back on stroke just to top up the maximum system pressure and re-trigger that sequence valve. But for the most part, the pump is off stroke, not producing flow just holding us at our maximum system pressure until whatever it is that's jamming our motor has unjammed that shaft and allows the motor to spin freely once again. I hope this video has answered more of your curiosities about closed loop hydrostatic drives. Thanks for watching. We have hundreds of interactive resources like this live schematic so you can try out your wild ideas without blowing anything up. Get started at lunchboxsessions.com.